After testing the new Tesla Model 3 long range dual motor Highland, I thought it would be very interesting to test the Polestar 2 long range dual motor right afterwards. But unfortunately, Polestar only had a performance version available because that is currently their only press car of the Polestar 2. So that is what we have for this video. So today, we're gonna find out how far the Polestar 2 long range dual motor performance the new updated Mollier 24 can go on a full charge of battery and at the end of the video we're going to compare it to the new Tesla Model 3 long range dual motor Highland and see how these two cars compare. Chempower offers some of the best DC fast chargers in the world with their unique sleek and modern load balancing charging satellites. The small satellites translates to spacious and airy charging locations. When you as a user roll up to a Campower charging station, you don't have to think about connecting to a charger that delivers the correct speed for your car. The Campower load balancing chargers automatically will allocate the correct power to your car, maximizing the charging speed for the whole site. When connected, Campower chargers have a QR code you can scan and this way you can easily monitor your charging session remotely regardless of payment method. This is just super cool. A huge thanks to my friends at Campower in Finland for sponsoring this video. The day today actually started with pretty decent weather around 20, 21 degrees Celsius, dry roads and also sunny but a few clouds. But after 25, 30 minutes on the road now, we've been through two rain showers. It has poured down a lot and then now it's suddenly dry. The temperatures has dropped to around 13, 14 degrees Celsius. Now it's 14 degrees Celsius, but it also prepped up to like 18, 19. So the weather is all over the place. And that means I don't think we have the best consumption considering what this car would have been able to have if we had more stable weather at 20.7 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Because actually before the temperature dropped and before we saw rain, it was around 20 or hovering right below 20 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. But we'll see, according to the wind map, we also have a push in the northward direction, which is the direction we're headed of around four meters per second. So we'll have to see once we get to a turnaround point and also back again. But guys, I'm back in a Polestar 2 after having spent time in the Polestar 3, the Polestar 4, Audi Q6 e-tron, Audi SQ6 e-tron, and recently a week in the brand new Tesla Model 3 long range dual motor. And I have to say, you know, I like that Tesla a lot. It has been improved in a lot of ways, you know, but this is still one of my favorite cars. I mean, the interior in that Tesla upgraded, yeah, it was pretty nice, you know, compared to how it was. And then I hopped into my Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo, which is my, you know, personal vehicle over the weekend. And I'm like, ah, this is a true luxury car. And then I hop into this, it's Monday today, and I'm like, yeah, I really like this car. I really love this light colored Napa leather interior. I love the layers of materials. It's just a very pleasant place to be. And yes, the cockpit in the front, or even the rear, isn't as roomy as the Tesla Model 3, but I prefer this cocooned cockpit feeling. It just feels more sporty. I, I really like this car. And that is so interesting having having spent so much time in other cars this is still one of my favorite electric cars on the market and you have you know traditional buttons you have buttons here you have a gear selector you have a volume knob you have stocks you have you know a separate infotainment system screen here and then you have your driver display you don't have to change it if it's not broken so yeah this is still like ergonomically one of the best cabins one of the best cars in the business and just having spent you know a few hours in this after having spent a whole week in that Tesla Model 3 or four or five days I much prefer this it's not even close and yes this is the performance version so it does have the big wheels and tires and the Continental Sport Rubber Contact Sport 6 on this car which are really good tires but they are more noisy than the smaller wheels and tires those 18 inches we had on that Tesla Model 3 so I think like like dollar for dollar or, or pound for pound this is still or this is now a little bit more noisy when it comes to road noise, especially on these Norwegian roads compared to that Tesla Model 3. But it's not bad, it's just not as good as the Tesla where the Tesla was worse before. But comfort wise, even though this is on the, you know, sport suspension because it's the performance version, the Olin stampers, it's so much more compliant than that Tesla. It just, you know, 
smoothens, smoothens out those uh, small imperfections and is also taut enough to, to feel sporty. And that Tesla Model 3 at, you know, motorway speeds like 120 kilometers an hour or higher, if you hit a bump, it would bounce. This is so much more settled. This is so much more sophisticated and refined in its suspension tuning than that Tesla Model 3. So this is still a better driving car in, in every way. I like this in every way. But what we're gonna find out today is how will it compare when it comes to range and consumption. This being on bigger wheels and tires, this also being the performance version. I don't think we're gonna get close to that Tesla Model 3 because that got really, really good performance when it comes to range. But I still think, and I'm hoping we're gonna still be able to post decent numbers. So let's find out, let's continue this test and I'll talk to you guys a little bit later. We're now at our turnaround point here in Muelv, and the weather has now cleared up. I mean, the weather today is insane. We've been through like two or three showers already. Once it rained so hard that the traffic almost came to a halt because the visibility was basically zero. So pretty, pretty insane. But here, it doesn't look like it has rain at all. So it looks like just be very, very local showers today with this crazy crazy weather so we're here at our turnaround point we're going to go underneath the motorway here and then we're going to take a look at our average consumption now which is at 20.5 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers so that is better than what it was but let's see now what it will be once we uh hit the motorway and we start moving southwards back to where we started so we've been on the road for about 50 minutes now we have another 50 minutes before we are back to where we started for me it's going to be 50 minutes for you guys it's just going to be fade to black and fade back luckily for the past half an hour maybe even 40 minutes the weather has been nice like this dry 19 18 degrees celsius and we are now back at where we started this range test earlier so what we're going to do now we're currently at 35 percent maybe we're going to ride with a percent less when we come to the charter is that we're going to connect now and see what charging speed we get after just passive heating just driving the car with no preconditioning preconditioning we do that in a different test here on the channel i do that in my long trip test which will probably be my next video that i'm going to film tomorrow and the weather should be yeah summerly again i mean the weather this summer in oslo has been pretty pretty poor okay we've now stopped at the charter here and let's take a look at the actual consumption so this is the result so 21.7 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers so yeah that is testament to the bad weather and uh, the conditions today now let's connect this charger let's see if i can do that nope that was not intentional don't throw it like that i was trying to twist the cable sorry about that ionica so we're now connected to this charger here charger number one and we are at 36 percent state of charge yeah i've never done that before i'm never going to do that again i tried to throw it up in the air and catch it yeah while holding the camera in the other hand okay we have now connected and the car is now charging took a few seconds to initialize but not too bad so 36 percent state of charge this facelifted version of the Polestar 2 should get 205 kilowatts as its peak charging speed. But I don't know if we're going to get that at 36% stated charge. And no, we're not going to get that at 36% stated charge. It ramped up to over 160 kilowatts and now it throttled and then it went down to 136. Hmm. I was hoping it would stay above that. 138 is climbing a little bit. Maybe it's going to stabilize and then it's just going to climb a little bit more. Yeah, okay. 139, 140 maybe. But at 37% state of charge, not too bad. But I was hoping for a little higher charging speeds. Now let's take a look at the results. So if we take the usable battery capacity of this Polestar 2 long range dual motor performance, which is 79 kilowatt hours usable. We take that number divided by the consumption, 21.7 
kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers and then subtract 3% for heat loss and just charging losses, we get a theoretical range under today's conditions of 300 and 53 kilometers which is a lot less than what we got with the tesla model 3 long range dual motor highland last week but also the conditions aren't comparable at all and also these two cars are though quite close in performance i think this does zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 4.2 seconds and that does 4.4 seconds this is a much more performance oriented version of the polestar 2 and also feels a lot quicker this has 20 inch wheels, it has the Olin's dampers, it has the Brembo brakes, it's tuned very differently to that car. So I don't think it's fair to compare. And also the conditions were very, very different because today, yeah, the conditions were so varying and the temperature swung between like 13 degrees Celsius, heavy showers and 19, 20 degrees Celsius and sun like we have now, while the conditions were much more stable and, and warmer and milder with that Tesla Model 3. And also, I've tested this car last year, right after it came out. I had one on loan in Germany. This was a demo car from Polestar Space in Munich. And I got to test this car under very good conditions. Dry roads and 25 degrees Celsius, something around there. And I got almost 400 kilometers of range. So I know that this car can do a lot better. And the poor results today, relatively poor results, is because of the poor conditions. But either way... I love driving this car and I think what you get, it's worth taking that compromise in efficiency and range compared to something like a Tesla Model 3 because in your day-to-day -day driving, you're not going to notice it that much, the di difference. Say this with the non-performance version on the 19-inch wheels, it's going to get probably somewhere in the 420 kilometer range compared to the 440 or 450 I got with the Tesla Model 3. So it's about maybe was that like 10% less efficient, which you're not going to notice that much in a day-to-day -day setting, but you're going to notice that while taking it on a longer trip potentially. But if you're not a person who takes the cars on long trips like weekly or monthly, I don't think it's worth going for that Tesla Model 3 versus this because this is so much better in every other way, in my opinion, though it's going to be a little bit more expensive. So I prefer this car every day of the week. After four years on the market, this is still one of my absolute favorite electric cars. And in th at this price point, it just might be my favorite electric car. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please drop me a thumbs up down below. And for more car content, as always, please subscribe. See you guys later and goodbye.